And I'm a big, big person on buying things that are made in America. Can I get an amen? Anybody out there give me an amen? This is the problem. And this is another thing that just really, it, it's got to really bother people that when you go to the store, you have to search out products that are made in America. Why can't the stores have a section that says, these products are made in America. So when you go into the store, there you go. You know this is made in America. You don't have to filter through all the China crap to find it. So you want to support your local people. You want to support your local farmers. You want to support your local stores and all this kind of stuff. But there are times when we have to go to the big box stores because the local guys don't have the buying power of the big box stores. And see, that's the problem. And that's not going to change. There is nothing that's going to change that. No matter what we do, um, who we vote in or anything else, there's too much money involved. And money is what is destroying this country. Mark my words. Money is the root of all evil, right? Lily, to you, I think China is deliberately trying to cause harm to the U.S. by shutting everything down and withholding goods. And I would totally agree with that statement. I think it's ridiculous. And what they're putting their own people through to accomplish this is horrible. So everybody out there that knocks the United States and everything else, thank God you don't live in some of these other countries because you see what they do to them. At least here, we still have some rights and we still have the freedoms that were paid for with blood, sweat, and tears from all of our service members throughout the years. Think about that, folks. That's who we owe the gratitude to. It's not the federal government. It's the men and women that have died for this country. And that's why you have the freedom to sit here and watch YouTube and go to the store when you want and buy what you want and go to work where you want and drive the car you want and have as many kids as you want. That's why you have these freedoms. Remember that, folks. I've done videos on the Great Depression and, you know, they already know how to use and how they can control food. I mean, they did it during the Great Depression and it worked very well for them. And trust me, folks, they didn't forget about it. It's all been put into a vault. It's all been sealed away. They keep it all for a rainy day and the rainy day is about to come here. So either you're going to be like Noah and build the boat, fill it full of food and your family and be able to ride the storm out. Or unfortunately, you can be like, what happened during the Great Depression and you're standing in food lines and you're rationed to this and you're rationed to that and you can only buy this per month and you can only buy that and they're going to give you, you know, they had stamps and they can do it, folks. They've already proven that it works. Wouldn't take much to bring that out of retirement and throw it in our laps. Uh, Caleb, yes, I'll agree with that statement that you made. Um, I think a lot of people are going to uh, fall back. They believe that the almighty government is going to be there and save everyone. Uh, let me tell you, folks, you're totally mistaken on that point. Uh, the government in a mass type scenario devastation um, is not going to be able to take care of everyone. All right. It's not going to happen. It's not designed. It's not in the playbook. It's not what they're going to do. They will protect all their interests first. And then whoever they deem as a asset to what they want the future to be will be next. When you're dealing with natural disasters, it doesn't matter if you live up north. Okay. Because I lived up north for a while, 20 years. All right. You plan in the wintertime. You plan for, uh, at least we always did. Now you do have, it's the same scenario. If they forecast that you're going to get a foot of snow, I guarantee you 
The grocery store is going to be a madhouse. The show is going to be phenomenal because people are going to be taking all the bread and the milk. They forgot about everything else, but you know, that's the first thing to go up north. It's no different than down here or anywhere in a hurricane prone area. You know, um, even if you're prepping, you know, even if you live in the Midwest or Oklahoma or in these kind of places, you plan on, you know, tornadoes. That's your biggest threat, you know. Uh, you may have a tornado shelter. Well, you're going to have supplies in there, right? I mean, only one that thinks outside the box would make sure you have food, water, flashlight, first aid, at least bare minimums inside your shelter, your your tornado shelter in the ground. You know, I mean, everybody has to plan for something. I don't care where you live. There's something that's going to go on and something's going to take place. And you have to be ready for it. Every part of the country, every part of the world has a different scenario that they have to plan for. There's no perfect place. I mean, even if you lived in the South Pole or North Pole, you, <laughs> you got to figure out how to stay freaking warm, right? I mean, hello. There's just no perfect place. So you have to have a plan. You have to be prepared. You see, folks, in the end, no matter what you think or what you believe or anything else, if you really think about it, you control your own destiny. You can be one of the ones that's in there and you're fighting for whatever crumbs or the last minute things you may be able to get. Or you can choose to be on the other side of the fence where you are prepped you are ready and you are sitting back watching the show because see, there's always going to be a great show for you to watch and you have to choose if you want to be the one watching the show or if you want to be the one in the show. Does that make sense? I choose to be the one watching the show. I don't want to be part of the show. They can have all that they want. There's a, there's a lot of stuff that's going on between the supply and demand. And there's things that are taking place and why we're one crisis away from the everything crumbling down around us. Uh, I'm sure you're all aware how the stock market took a huge dump on Friday. It's pre-open is still in the negative for Monday, um, all across the board, um, everything was down. Gold was down, which is very surprising because usually when everything goes south, gold goes up, but gold went down. That's very concerning to me. Now, I'm not a, a big person into uh, finances and all that kind of stuff, but that's a very um, eye-opening situation, if you ask me. Uh, corn was down. Um, I was nice to see that the price of oil went down. That doesn't bother me at all. Um, I did do a video the other day. I talked about the diesel prices and everything else. That is something that's very, very crucial. Um, if something happens and that thing does spike, that's going to be a very, very bad, crucial situation we're going to be put in um, because a lot of things that move our goods across this country from one side to the other, from north to south, it doesn't matter, east to west, a lot of these things use these. If something happens to that and it goes way high, we're going to start losing a lot of different ways and means of being able to move the goods. Now we have the whole thing that's going on still over in China, in Shanghai, um, where they're keeping people basically locked like animals in their uh, their homes. They're not allowed to leave. They can't do anything. They can't go anywhere. They bring them food. They do all this kind of stuff. But in the meantime, what's happening is they're not working. The ports aren't running. They're finding a hard time to find people to bring the goods from outside of Shanghai into the ports because they have to go through all this testing and everything else and if they get there and they find out that they test positive or whatever else then they're stuck there period 
with no place to go. I mean, what are they going to do? Sleep in their trucks? Are they going to keep them confined in there or something? I mean, who only knows? But what this is meaning is there's not a lot of goods that are coming over. Now, yes, off our ports in Los Angeles or say the West Coast, in the Gulf and the East Coast, they're still playing catch up and there's still ships that are waiting to come in. But it's starting to get a little bit easier and things are easing off in a sense because, as I said in the video the other day, the end of the line is the end of the line. There's not a lot of stuff coming behind it. So what's going to happen down the road? You know, we have the housing crisis that's taking place. And it's only a matter of time before that thing's going to fall out, just like it did back in 2008. Things are, the homes are just so overpriced, it's ridiculous. Um, you have, I personally, I deliver in these neighborhoods. You have these neighborhoods that's been, they've been building for the last three or four years. Houses started off at $200,000. The same house now, they want to turn around, they're, they're selling it for $400,000. It's probably only really worth two hundred. dollars if you get what I'm saying. So somebody's $200,000 upside down on a brand new home. So now, right now, isn't the time to buy a home, I'm telling you. Now, it would be a very, very bad thing for you to do. That's my opinion and my opinion only. But buying a house right now in this market, no way. If you want to sell, now's the time to sell, folks. Because you're going to make out like a bandit and take the money and run. Because, you know, you don't want to turn around and buy something because then you, you're just going to lose. Um, we have what's going on over in Europe. And this is a, toughy, a touchy situation here. Um, we got the little man over there um, that has uh, been threatening and uh, being the big bully. Um, a lot of people in a lot of different countries and everything else. And, um, you know, we don't know how this is going to play out. We don't know what the madman's going to do. We don't know um, how this is going to be perceived with us helping out and um, giving, let's say, so called uh, military equipment to a certain country um you have the little guy there that's trying to he he wants to control i should say um a lot of the different countries that would like to join nato now because of all this uh chaos that has been caused and he's threatening those people with retaliation, of course. And we just don't know where a lot of this stuff is going. As you can see, there is so much that's going on. Why we're one major crisis away from the collapse. It's only, it's only a matter of time. Now we have Charlie Victor 19 and another one of its offsprings. And I guess in New York, there's like several offsprings. You know, the thing can't keep the thing in its pants, if you get what I'm saying. Just making a little joke. And, but what I'm trying to get my point is, is every time we turn around, there's an, another little offspring that's popping out of this thing. Um, I think that's going to be the way of the world for the coming future. Um, the last thing in a sense, is, you know, this country, between everything that's going on, we're so divided. Um, and that is probably one of the biggest things that concerns me. And we're being divided by government, the way that everything is being done. Um, you're basically pitting, you know, good versus bad or red versus blue or however you want to look at it. You know, I don't really like talking politics and I'm not going to really get into it that much, but it's what's taking place. We're more divided now than, in my opinion, we've ever been. 
And what better way to bring us all back together but a war? Now, I don't want to see us go to war. I don't want to see any of our men and women have to put a boot on any soil anywhere. Doesn't matter where it is. I'm not for it. But governments like war. They like war because it generates profits. Profits generate government jobs. So the more people that they can pay, more money they can make, and the more corporations nowadays with all these head honchos making all the decisions nowadays, we have, you know, if you're going to invest your money anywhere, my advice would be to do your research and find out what companies are in the stock market that are uh, that make any type of military goods. That's where I'd put my money because that's where the money will be made if something happens that we did ever go to war. And one last topic, and I know a lot of people out there, you've heard me talk about this, and I've done videos on it. And it's how these big billionaires are controlling and they are forming our future as we speak. They want to control what we eat. They want to control probably how we eat it. They want to control how it's made, how it's grown. They want all this kind of stuff. And um, Bill Gates is one of the biggest contributors to this whole situation. He owns the most farmland in the United States. He has the laboratories that are already growing lab-born meats, you know, genetically modified. I've done videos on it, showed you the video of his lab. I mean, it can't get any clearer. The thing of it is, folks, we all control our destiny. We all sit back and we are in control of what happens to us and our families. In the very end, we're the ones that make the final decision. Now, in closing, the one main way that we can help ourselves be prepared and expect the unexpected, because that's how we have to play this game nowadays, folks. This isn't, uh, um, you know, it's, it's not a little computer game or a PlayStation game or something that you're playing here. Uh, you're, you're talking about your future, your family's future, their survival, and everything else. Your time is running really, really low to really start preparing. Uh, slowly but surely, they are implementing limitations.